Good morning, Half Moon Bay young people. Well, you're in school now. I hope you're enjoying the beginning of your school year. I know for some of you it'll look different. A lot different, maybe. But we just pray that uh, in whatever configuration you are going to school, whether that be from home, uh, video, or you're actually at campus, we hope that you are enjoying the beginning of the school year. And anytime I'm trying to learn something, every time, no matter where I am, I learn better if I pray about it first. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. God, so we're praying for you. That God will help us with our studies and uh, our attitude towards school. This he is helps true. with that a lot. This is true. And we hope everybody's doing good as they can be with all the fires in the state. And so uh, we probably ought to take a moment and remember all those people uh, that uh, have lost their homes and some of them have lost property. Mm -hmm. uh, my granddaughter almost lost her house. The fire came within a, a mile of their home. And uh, uh, through the grace of God, there was no damage done to her house. And we are so thankful for that. But we do know that whether your home is burned down or just burned a little bit, or if you're just affected by the smoke, um, there's so much damage that can be done and there's so many impacts on the way we feel about our memories, about what we can do, how summer has changed, how it's been different this summer than other summers, and that on top of the COVID virus, it can be very challenging. And so prayer is is super, super important, as is talking to your family and your friends about how you're feeling and how you're doing, um, especially if it's, you're finding this all very hard. Um, but we, we are praying for you. Should we pray to get started? Yeah, let's pray, and uh, then we'll go into the lesson. Okay, good, good. Would you like to lead us in prayer? Sure. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you for the opportunity to come and uh, share your word and to worship you in fellowship even though it's uh, kind of a different way uh, but we thank you and we are grateful for the opportunity just to share with our friends and family your good news with all that's going on Lord we know that you're in control and ultimately your plan why we may not understand it or see it at this point we know that you have a plan for all that is happening. And as long as we lean on you, we will get our strength through you to go through whatever challenge we may face uh, on a daily basis, given all the things that are going on. So we ask uh, uh, your guidance, your direction. You ask to prepare our hearts and minds for today's lesson. And we just, uh, we just lift this time up to you and say, Father, we are so grateful that you give us this opportunity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, we're going to continue studying in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. The book of Daniel is the 27th book in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Daniel was the last of the, what is considered the major prophets. And as we're going to see as we study Daniel over the next few weeks, we're going to see how God has taken control of Daniel's life and guides and directs Daniel in many, through many difficult situations. And one of the reasons he was able to do that is that God, Daniel turned his life over to God and honored God. Mm -hmm. And if you remember last week, he wouldn't eat the food from the king's table. He kept a simple uh, fare of food. He did not want to be defiled by food that was not prepared according to Hebrew law. And he stayed faithful to that, and God honored that. And if we stay faithful to what God asks of us, he will also honor. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn three important uh, points, or lessons, I should say. 
The first one is God is control is in control of the powerful. That's number one. Number two, God is in control of his people. That's us. He's in control of us if we turn our lives over to him. And three, God is, is in control of all history. So would you like to explain point one? I will, I will. So God is in control of the powerful. And this is kind of a timely message for us because in our country, we are approaching a new presidential election. And in that election will, will be determined who is the president of the United States. And that's a person who impacts us as Americans, but it also impacts us as global citizens because all of the countries in the world have dealings with the President of the United States. And so God is in control of the person in that role, no matter who they are. Just as God gave King Nebuchadnezzar dreams telling him about the future, he gives guidance and he can give guidance to our President and other world leaders. Some of them may not believe in God. Well, that's true. And yet, God can still influence their we decisions. We see that in King Nebuchadnezzar. We do. We he do. didn't believe in So God is in control of believers and non-believers. And those in powerful places and those in not so powerful places. So as we approach this election season, um, I think it's important to remember that we are citizens of the United States. There will be an outcome. We may be happy with it or we may not be happy with it. But what we can always know is that God is in control of us. Point two is God is, con is in control of his people. We often face difficulties, but like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we learn that if we put our trust in God, he'll see us through it. In Romans 8.28, it says, For those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, that's, again, Romans 8.28, and that's a promise that we can claim mm -hmm. and depend on. Mm -hmm. And God is in control of all history. God's knowledge of the future didn't end when Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom ended. Uh, the future was shown in the king's dreams still applies that God's kingdom will be established on earth and it will be greater than all others established by people in the past, in the present, in the future. So God in control of all of history, also in control of his kingdom, which is larger than and better than any kingdom we can imagine. All right, today's lesson is drawn from Daniel 2, verses 1 through 49. Now, that's a lot of reading. Long chapter. So we just selected certain verses that we will read and share with you that will give you an overview of the lesson. The main point is to remember God is in control, and God's will will always be done. No matter what mankind does, God's will will always be done. And when we leave out verses, it's not because they're unimportant verses. Every, every letter in the Bible is important. We are teaching a specific lesson this morning, and we chose those verses. And we'll tell you which ones we're reading. The verses we've chosen are the ones that we think teach this lesson the best. So I'm going to start, again, we're in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, I'm starting with verse 4. Then the wise men answered the king in the Aramaic language, and they said, Our king, live forever. We are your servants. Please tell us your dream. Then we will tell you what it means. In verse 5, King Nebuchadnezzar said to them, No, you must tell me the dream, and then you must tell me what it means. If you don't do these things, I'll have you torn apart. I will turn your houses into piles of stone. We know Nebuchadnezzar was a very powerful king. And he could also be very mean. It sounds like it. And uh, very demanding. Yeah. So we read in verse 10, the wise men answered the king. They said, no one on earth can do what the king has asked. Not even the greatest and most powerful king has ever asked 
a fortune teller or a magician or a wise man to tell him what they dream. So they're admitting no way can they tell what what uh, Nebuchadnezzar had dreamed. And that made Nebuchadnezzar very mad. So in, in verse 12, it, he gets angry very quickly. When the king heard that, he became very angry. He gave an order for all the wise men of Babylon to be killed. In 13, so King Nebuchadnezzar's order was announced, and all the wise men were to be put to death. And men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends. They were going to kill them. In 14, Arioch was the commander of the king's guards, and he was going to be the one to put death to put to death the wise men of Babylon. But Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and skill. So what Daniel did says, give me time and I will tell you what the king dreamt and what it meant. So we read in verse 16, when Daniel heard the story, he went to King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel asked him to give him some more time and he would tell the king what he had dreamed and what it meant. So Daniel went to his house. He explained the whole story to his friends. Daniel asked the friends to pray to God of heaven. Daniel asked them to pray that God would show them mercy and help them understand this secret. Then Daniel and his friends would not be put to death with the other wise men of the Babylon. So Daniel prayed to God. Remember, we just talked a moment ago about praying about school, about praying about anything we do. Daniel shows us an example of that. In verse 20, Daniel says, Praise God forever and ever. He has wisdom and power. And in 23, he says, I thank you and praise <coughs> you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You told me what we asked of you. You told us about the king's dream. In 25, so very quickly, Arioch took Daniel to the king. And Arioch said to the king, I have found a man among the captives from Judah. He can tell the king what his dream means. Do you think the captain of the guards, when he said, I have found, he didn't really find him. God sent Daniel to him. God arranged all this. This is true. But the captain of the guards was trying to score some brownie points, I'm sure. A couple of kings. Yeah, for sure. So we read in verse 27, it says, Daniel answered, No person can explain to the king the secret he has asked us about. No wise man, no magician, no fortune teller can do this. So he's telling the king, nobody can tell you what you dreamed. But there is a God in heaven who explains secret things. God has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen at a later time. This is your dream. This is the vision you saw while lying on your bed. So in verse 30, God also told this secret to me. This is Daniel speaking. It is not because I have greater wisdom than other men. It is so that you, my king, may know what it means. In that way, you will understand what went through your mind. My king, in your dream, you saw a large statue in front of you. It was huge, shiny, and frightening. In 32, the head of the statue was made of pure gold. Its chest and arms were made of silver. Its middle body and the upper part of its legs were made of bronze. And in 33, the lower part of the legs were made of iron. Its feet were made partly of iron and partly of baked clay. And the story goes on, which you see in the video, where the statue is destroyed by a large stone that is not cut by human hands, meaning it came from God. And that stone grows into a great mountain. And that mountain represents God's kingdom. That has not happened yet. That is in our future. 
we don't know when. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say it's tomorrow, next week, next year. We don't know. It's not for us to know. But it is that we can claim the promise that it will happen. Mm -hmm. God will, in his time, set up his kingdom on this earth. Mm -hmm. And it will be greater than any kingdom ever established by man. So that's something we all have to look forward to. We don't know when it's going to be. A lot of people have been waiting for it for a long time. And we're, you know, we just, uh, we can claim the promise. We know it's going to happen. We just don't know when. And that's probably for the best. Because if we knew when, we may act inappropriately. And we don't want to be sitting around waiting for it to happen. But we do want to be ready if it does. And part of being ready is to follow God's direction in our life. Right. And as we talked earlier in the lesson, that God controls his people. If we turn our lives over to him, he will direct us. Mm -hmm. And he will have us busy about his business. And his business is saving souls. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us in the business of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection on the cross. So we always want to keep that foremost in our thoughts that as Christians we have an obligation and a duty to share the good news of Jesus Christ. It's true. Yeah. And we can do that. We can try to do that in everything we say and in everything we do. Yeah. Not Spe easy, but it's pretty simple. Especially in our actions. Yeah. You know? Whatever what, they, They'll know us by our love. They'll know we're Christians by our love. So let's let's uh let we're gonna let you see the rest of the story in the video. So we have a few questions we want to go over, and you can follow along. And uh, why don't you try to answer them as I ask them? I get to ask the questions because I'm the oldest. Go ahead. All right. How long had King Nebuchadnezzar been on the throne when he had this dream? At that point, King Nebuchadnezzar had been on the throne for two years when he had the dream, when the dream came to him. Yeah. Two years. So he was a new king, and this dream really troubled him because he could not grasp the meaning of it. What did King Nebuchadnezzar demand from the wise men? Well, King ne it, it almost sounded like a trick, really. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted his wise men to tell him what the dream meant. But before that, he wanted them to tell him what it was he dreamed. So have you ever woken up from a dream and you want to talk to somebody about it and you want to share it with them? Maybe it scared you or excited you or... And you say, I want to tell you about my dream, but first you have to tell me what I dreamt. Well, they're going to think you're nuts. And that's pretty much what the wise men thought of King Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't quite know what to do with well, this. Well, probably the king didn't trust his wise men all that much. Well, that is entirely possible. I, I have a feeling that was part of the reason. It could be. Uh, but I am sure God implanted that thought in his mind. God can deal with non-believers, trust true. me, and bend them to his will. This is true. Uh, what did the wise men say uh, to Nebuchadnezzar the king what he dreamed? The wise men told King Nebuchadnezzar that only a god could tell him what he dreamed. Isn't that amazing? Only a god could explain that. And we know who explained the dream. God Jehovah. Daniel asked King Nebuchadnezzar for what? Well, when Daniel came to him and said, I can help you with this dream thing, he said, but I, I want some time. I need some time. Why do you think he was asking for time? Well, I think what Daniel did when he was in any situation, his first action item 
was to pray. And I think that he wanted to pray. I suspect also he wasn't exactly sure what it, how to answer the king, but that he was going to pray to God about it. But he was pretty confident, I think, that God would give him the answer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, don't, I don't doubt that he had confidence that, that God would lead him to the answer at all. And what did Daniel tell the captain of the guard? Well, he told him that he would interpret, Daniel told Ariak that he would interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And so that Daniel said God showed King Nebuchadnezzar his dream. What did Daniel say? Let me, I misread that, so let me go over it again. What did Daniel say God showed King Nebuchadnezzar in his dream? Oh, he said, God, Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar, he said that God showed the king the future in his dream. So, Daniel described the dream to Nebuchadnezzar that in the dream, King Nebuchadnezzar was seeing the future. Mm -hmm. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, what did he do with Daniel and his friends? He put him in charge of all the, all the other men, all the wise men. Yeah, he so made them the supervisors, the managers, the bosses. Yeah, he gave them all uh, a promotion. Promotion, a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and go ahead. And and made him very very made them very very important in the king's crew, if you will, in the, in the king's organization. So now most of the organization of the king uh, were non-believers, right? That's true. They were Babylonians. That's right. And they worshipped their own gods. Mm -hmm. They didn't worship God, Jehovah. So we see that by Daniel being faithful to God, that he has, God has elevated Daniel and his friends to positions of power and influence mm -hmm. in a uh, empire that did not believe in God, Jehovah. So if we are faithful, no matter what our situation is, we can be made to be useful in environments that are hostile to Christians mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. if we stay faithful to the Lord and look to Him mm -hmm. for guidance and direction. God will lift us. He's not going to leave us hanging out there and say, go fend for yourself, bud. He is going to see us through whatever difficulties we have or whatever challenges may come up. So we just have to learn to depend deeply on God and believe in God's word. We have an advantage over Daniel and his friends because Daniel and them did not have a whole Bible. They had the first five books. They did not have the Old Testament and the New Testament. We know how the story ends. As the pastor has said many times, we know the ending. So we have an advantage over the people in the Old Testament. Let us be assured and hold on to that assurance of who God is and that God is in control. And that's, that's one of the very, very important lessons we learn from Daniel. He relies on God. God answers his prayers, not necessarily by making situations turn out the way Daniel may be asking them to turn out, but he makes him, he gives him gifts, he makes him wise, he puts him in a position, um, and most importantly, he puts him in a position to be able to tell many, many people about God. Yeah, don't you think of most of the people in the court? would know that they were Hebrews. Of course. And had learned the story that mm -hmm. he has held faithful to the Hebrew teachings. Of course. Of course. And that influences people just by your actions, their actions, uh, even though they're interacting with people that were not of the Hebrew faith. And do you think that was all part of God's plan? 
Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. That wasn't even a trick question, was it? <laughs> and, uh, and, and as we go deeper into Daniel, and we see other situations that these four young men get involved in, you will see God's hand in every one of these actions and how those four staying faithful, what an influence it had on a whole nation. So stay tuned, stay safe, stay learning, and stay in prayer. All right. Julia, would you lead us in closing prayer? Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for these rich Bible stories. We thank you so much for the way that we have the Bible ready at our access. We thank you for the materials that we can share, the videos. We thank you for the stories that we can teach. Uh, it helps so much as teachers to have the Bible and have the Bible stories to be able to share with the kids and with our other believers. And Lord, so we thank you for that help as teachers. We ask for that same help as learners, as we know the Bible and your word is long and rich and has everything to do with our lives every day. And we thank you that we can dive into it, that we can learn through it, and we can do that every day because we have the freedom to do that and because you have invited us to do that. And we have the opportunity to do that. So Lord, we thank you for the lesson. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for our church family and our, our families. We thank you for our community, our state, our nation. We thank you for the, the safety that you're giving us. We ask for your continued protection from fires, from COVID, from heat, from new ways of learning, new ways of working from home. We ask, Lord, that you walk with us so closely every day so that we are constantly reminded that you are there for us and you are empowering us to be there for others. And we pray all this, Lord, in Jesus' name, and we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.